Hey, how's it going? My name is Riley and I'm a documentary filmmaker that likes talking about everything from filmmaking and creativity to faith. I'm also a Sony user who likes to shoot in ProRes RAW. So if any of that interests you, be sure to consider hitting the subscribe button below. All right, in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a walkthrough on how to import and work with ProRes RAW footage in both Final Cut Pro and Premiere. For the past couple months, I've been shooting on the Sony a7S III and the Atomos Ninja 5 and working in ProRes RAW. It's a combination that really does deliver a lovely image, but I've also seen a lot of questions and misinformation on how ProRes RAW footage really works and what the best way to handle it in post is. So this video is hopefully gonna save you guys some time as well as give you guys some clarity on the steps to take when working with ProRes RAW footage. All right, let's dive in. So first I'm gonna walk through how to handle ProRes RAW footage in Final Cut and then I'll jump over to Premiere. So if you're a Premiere user, feel free to skip ahead in the video to that section. Now with Final Cut, you're gonna to wanna to do all the normal stuff. You're gonna to want to create a new library and then import the footage. I've already done those steps. One thing that you may see online is that when you create a library, some people will suggest to come over to the inspector tab and click on modify for the library. And they'll tell you to select this wide gamut HDR mode. I actually don't think that this is necessary at this point with the updates that Final Cut uh, has done for ProRes RAW. You're perfectly fine to leave this in standard. I think it's actually a lot more straightforward. You don't have to worry about uh, some of these extra things when you export. So go ahead and leave this to standard. What you'll notice is the footage that I've imported and potentially the footage that you've imported doesn't look flat. It doesn't look uh, like the log footage should. I am using the a7S III here and you'll see that this image is nice but it doesn't look super flat and even uh, like this image over here it just looks very blown out and so you'll see that what Final Cut is doing by default is adding a Rec. 709 LUT. And this actually is not uh, what we want, uh, but because ProRes RAW is RAW, it needs to be converted into a log color space and then worked with from there. So what we're gonna wanna do in our first step is to remap all of these clips to a log format that we can work with. So you're gonna to wanna to open up the inspector tab here. I already have this open and then come over to the info tab. And what you're gonna to wanna to look for is the raw to log conversion tab. Now, if you are not seeing this in the info tab, you're gonna to wanna to come down to this metadata dropdown menu here. I have a custom window set up that I've titled ProRes Raw, uh, where I've added these uh, metadata views here to be able to access quickly. Uh, but if you don't see that, then what you can do is, for example, come over to the basic tab and come down to edit metadata view. And what you're gonna to wanna to look for is raw to log conversion. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this box is checked. The other thing you're gonna want is the camera LUT tab. This one you're gonna make want to make sure that this box is checked as well. I have them set up in several different views uh, just so that no matter which metadata view I'm looking at, uh, I don't lose track of it. So like I said uh, before, what's going on is that Final Cut is by default uh, placing a camera LUT on this footage. And it's partly why this looks so blown out and why this doesn't look flat at all. So what you're gonna to wanna to do here, and I think the simplest thing to do, uh, the easiest thing to do when working with ProRes RAW footage is just to select all of them. You can actually make uh, this edit in batches. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is come over to this RAW to log conversion tab, and you're gonna to wanna to select the color space 
that you're working with. For me using the A7S III, I actually want to use this one down here, S-Log3. Uh, this dot cine color space is a little bit smaller and closer to what I'm going to be delivering in. And it's just, uh, it's a lot friendlier color space to work with. A lot more LUTs are built for it. Uh, but if you're using uh, a different camera, then you're obviously going to want to select one of those uh, instead. So I'm going to select that. And then I'm also going to turn the camera LUT off. And you'll see with the thumbnails here that everything got pretty flat. And so any S-Log3 LUT that I place over this is going to work nicely. Uh, and it's just going to be a lot easier to work with. Now you could come over to your image and turn the uh, Rec. 709 LUT on. And that's a decent starting place to work with. It just adds a basic Rec. 709 LUT, but depending on where your exposure was, it may blow some stuff out. And so it's definitely not my favorite uh, starting point to work with, but it's definitely an option. Uh, I would recommend turning this to none and adding your own custom LUT or grading that from there. And that's basically all you're going to need to do for Final Cut. You're going to want to select all the footage, make sure the raw to log conversion is in slog3, uh, dot cine or whichever appropriate uh, raw to log conversion you're working with, and then just change camera LUT to none. And that is it for Final Cut. So the steps in Premiere are pretty straightforward as well. You're obviously going to want to make sure that you have the latest version of Premiere. Uh, as well as making sure that your Ninja 5 is updated and your camera is updated as well. I've gone ahead and created a new project as well as imported a few ProRes RAW clips. And from what you'll see here is that the highlights are pretty blown out and they just don't seem like it's a very good place to start working with. And that's because by default, Premiere adds a Rec. 709 color space LUT uh, onto the image, and it's just not awesome. If you come over to the effects control, you'll notice right here that this is selected by default. What you're going to want to do to start working with ProRes RAW footage is just come over here and select which log color space you want to work with. In my case, like I mentioned earlier, filming with the A7S III, I'm going to select S Gamut. 3.cine slog3 and it's going to bring all of that detail back into the highlights. I haven't found a way to do this in batches uh, and unfortunately it doesn't seem like Premiere has a way to adjust the ISO or white balance in post yet. Uh, this raw to log conversion is a fairly new feature in Premiere Pro so it's nice to see some of these features coming and some ProRes RAW support being added in Premiere, but hopefully in the near future, we'll see the feature set added and start to match what's in Final Cut. Well, hey, that is it for this quick and simple tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. I would really appreciate it. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.